Hello, my name is Maria Doyle and in this tutorial I'm going to take you through how you can create a volcano plot using Galaxy. So a volcano plot is often used to visualize results from RNA sequencing experiments and there's an example shown in the image on the right. A volcano plot is a type of scatter plot where every point in an RNA sequencing experiment represents a gene and you can many thousands of genes in the plot. And the x-axis is measuring the amount of change in, of the genes in one condition versus another. And the y-axis is measuring showing the statistical significance. And on the right-hand side of the plot, we've got genes that are upregulated. And on the left-hand side, we've got the genes that are downregulated. So to generate a volcano plot, uh, we need a file of differential expression results. And here we're going to use a file from the RNA sequencing counts to genes tutorial that was generated using the LimaVoom tool. But you can use any file um, that from other tools such as EdgeR or DEC2, as long as they have the required columns that I'll show you. And the data for this particular example is from a published study. And the comparison we are looking at is from genes from luminal cells in from pregnant mice versus lactating mice. OK, and what we're going to do is we're going to import the data into Galaxy and then we're going to create a few different volcano plot examples, coloring gene, significant genes and also labeling genes um, with their gene names. Okay, so the two files we need are can be found here in the tutorial. So what I'm going to do is copy, copy the file links there and then move to Galaxy. So here I'm going to use Galaxy Your, but you can use any Galaxy that has the Volcano Plot tool. And just before I import the files, I'm going to give the history a name. A good thing to do. Okay, and then I'm going to upload the two files into Galaxy. I'm pasting them into the paste fetch box and I'm going to set the file type to tabular. Open. And click start. Okay, and then my files should start uploading into the history on the right. And while they're doing that, I'm going to move back to the tutorial, which I'm accessing in this galaxy through the little graduation cap at the top menu. And in this tutorial interface, we can see that we can click on the volcano plot uh, tool link that's highlighted in blue, and that will bring us to the volcano plot tool in this galaxy which is handy okay so our two files have uploaded and i'm just going to check that they are file type tabular they are which is good and now i'm going to specify the input file which here is the limavoom file i'm going to specify the headers so i need to say the fdr header is in column eight here the p-value is in column seven. The log full change is in column four. And the gene identifiers, what we're gonna use for the labels is in column two. Okay, and then I'm gonna change, this is the significance that we're gonna to use to decide which genes to color in the plot. So I'm gonna change that to 0.1 as it was in the paper. And I'm gonna change the log full change threshold to 0 0.58, which is equivalent to a full change of 1.5. And I'm gonna click exe execute. And so those settings will, the log full change and the p-value will determine which genes get colored, the red and the blue that we saw before in the example. Okay, and while that is running, um, I'm just going to oh, have a closer look at the input file to show you. So for the input, so the only columns we need is one column of gene identifiers. 
and then the log full change and the p-value and adjust the p-value columns. So you don't have to have other columns in your file. And so in this input file, every row is a gene. And for the log full change here, this is for this here with the negative log full change is telling us that this particular gene is down-regulated in the luminal lactating, luminal cells from the lactating mice versus the pregnant. Okay, and our plot has been generated. So I'm gonna click on that to open it. And there we go. We have our first volcano plot with our genes colored red that met our thresholds. So they are less than FDR 0.01 and greater than 0.58 log full change. And then the genes that are blue are less than FDR 0.01 and less than minus 0.58 log full change. Okay, and now I'm gonna create another volcano plot and I'm gonna use the rerun button here. And this time, so I'm gonna leave all the settings the same but this time for the points to label, I'm going to say I'll label the significant and I'm going to label the top 10. And generate another plot there. And while that's running, I'm going to go back to the tutorial and say, OK, so these were the settings that we specified for our first plot. And that was the plot. Um, we had created and there was a question here why does the y-axis use a negative p-value scale so why is it negative here and that is because we want the most significant genes to be at the top because that makes them easier to see than if we didn't do that the most significant the genes with the smallest p-values would be squished at the bottom there okay and now our next plot is generated so we'll have a look at that and great, there we go. Now we can see we've got the gene names for the top 10 most significant genes. And we can see that we've got CSN1S2B is our most significant gene. And it's got quite a large log full change as well. Okay, and then for our final example, this time we are going to, so we're going to keep all the same settings again. But now we are going to, decide to label genes that we're inputting from a file. So that was the second file that we uploaded. And I'll just show you what that looks like. So that's here. It's a file with a single column. And it's got a set of gene names. So there's 30, 31 genes there, in the header row. And we're going to label those genes in a plot. And this time, just to show you that you can put these boxes around the gene names, if that makes it easier to highlight the gene names in the plot. So we'll do that. I'm going to execute. Okay, and while that's running, go back to the tutorial again. And so yeah, that's the second plot we made. Which gene was the most statistically significant? Well, we saw that. So that was this gene here, CSN 1S2B. And now this is what we're doing. So labeling these genes in the volcano plot. So this might be if you want to, if you've got like a favorite pathway or set of genes that you want to see, where are they located in the plot or to highlight them. Okay, and that is done now. So there we go. Now we've got our 31 genes labeled, the boxes around them. And we can see that all except two of the genes are significant. There's just two genes that are in the gray, gray area. Their lines showing that their points are in the gray. So it's MCL1 and GMFG. And if we return to the tutorial, so how many of the genes of interest are significant? So it was 29 at 31. And which gene is the most statistically significant? So that would be the one here, EGF. Okay, and if you want, you can select in the tool form to output the R code. And 
that will allow you to customize the plot further using R. And we've got another tutorial in Galaxy that sh shows you how to do that. Okay, so I hope this has helped you to see how you can generate a volcano plot using Galaxy. And if you have any more questions, you can ask them through the links here. And we'd love if you could let us know if you like the tutorial or if you have any suggestions for improvement. Thank you very much and I hope you have a nice day.